Yeah. I will build my kingdom upon this, Jesus. Right? He told us to be. This is going to be a power pack. This is going to be a life changing, swollen event. And if you have struggled to hear the voice of God or clarity tomorrow night, Pastor Ren Shumpton is going to teach you, everybody, how to hear the voice of God. Clearly. It's going to be an amazing sermon. This is going to be an amazing fleet man. And, and it's going to be full of the kingdom of Right? There's laws, right? There's law and order, right? Everybody knows natural laws, right? If I jump off this chair, who am I going? I'm going to fall, right? Why? Because there's gravity. It's a law. And there's laws in the natural, and there's laws in the supernatural. So we're here to gather in fellowship to teach you what we know and to impart into your eyes how to hear God, how to see, how to enter his presence, these kind of things. And when we think about the kingdom of heaven, what do we think? What do we know? We've been taught a lot of things. But where do we go to get a revelation? Where did John go? Whether I was in, in, in the body or in the spirit, I don't know. I really want to get to that place. You know, Peter, right? Peter was the wild one. We all have to know of Peter. Maybe some of us are Peter ourselves in spirit, right? Where, where he said to Jesus, Jesus, I'll go with you, right? I'll go to death with you. We're bros, right? I'm in. We've all been there. But when it came time, Peter said, I don't know him either. The, I was reading the scripture the other day. It said, even the even cussed when they accused him of knowing Jesus. Even cussed. I don't know the man. He denied him. <clears throat> I've been there. I've turned the other. Well, it doesn't end there. It ends that day. We have to understand that, that our daily bread is daily. Right? The Bible says that his grace and mercy are new every day. So my yesterday is gone. All of my accomplishments are gone. All of my failures are gone. I need grace and mercy today. And the devil wants to say, you know what you did yesterday. You know you're never going to break that addiction. You know you're never going to you're never going to count and you know what you've done. But when we read John 10.10, 10, what does it say? The devil comes and kills, kills, and destroys. But Jesus Christ came to give life and life more abundant. Our walk is just that. And we can't neglect the process that we go through because we don't learn by doing everything right. The world knows this. If we did everything right, we would have it all made, right? We have process, we have relationships we go through, we have struggles we go through, we have things that we have to deal with. And they all become tests to us because we're to overcome through the blood of the Lamb and his testimony. Isn't that what the scripture says? I can do all things to Christ, to strengthen Matthew 6 33 says, First seek ye the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness in all all things will be added unto your life. We're busy seeking the all first. We get distracted. We think that, well, it's up to a president or somebody else. Isn't that what happened in the Old Testament? When, when God says, I, I want to be your guidance. I want to be your father. I want to be this. And they said, no, we want a king to, you know, every other nation has a king. We want a king too. And the father in his mercy and grace is, here's your king. He stood head and shoulder above everybody else. He was the man of God who knew how to say everything and knew how to prophesy and knew how to do all these things right. He was head and shoulders. He was, he was a stage man. He was this and there. That's what we want. And it breaks the Father's heart. You know, when, when Adam and Eve stepped away, they left the Father. They left the presence. And they went into shame and they did. 
But he came and said, where are you? But Jesus redeemed him. But he was on a cross. He said, Father, where are you? And Jesus redeemed him. When Peter, he said to Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. Be my son. Do you love me? Yes, be my lambs twice. Peter, do you love me? And this time, Peter showed a little bit of the old Peter. There was, there was a change. There was a change in who he was and what he became. There was a process that he went through to get him there. And it ended up that he gave his life. There was redemption. And I'm telling you tonight, it doesn't matter where you are in your walk, but there's redemption. And there's another side because Jesus Christ said, We're going to the other side. I have, I probably know the plans I have for you. I know the call that I've placed upon your life. I know the anointing. I want to thank Brother Scott, Lion Fire International, Randy. Amanda, for hosting this. Um, Brother and Scott and I have been doing these apostolic regional gatherings. And what those look like are where we go around our region. We meet with different churches and ministries. Apostolic. And they say, oh, we're apostles and we're all the No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we're called apostolic. So we want to know what's happening in the region. We want to know what's happening in your church or your ministry. And we want to know what we can bring together for the kingdom's sake. So we started those those meetings, and then we've been meeting to meet pastors and leaders and people that are hungry for the kingdom of heaven to come together and fellowship those kind of things. So that's kind of how we started together, and we, we decided to bring in others like Pastor Ren Amanda to come in and blow with them. You know, he's from Mustang, Oklahoma, which is my Oklahoma city, and he's got his his son Isaiah from Supernatural. Let's give them a hand. Because they're going to be bringing, they're going to be bringing it. And the things of the Spirit are more caught than taught. When you're in the atmosphere and the doors open, can always go back. The work will always be the man for the kingdom, right? But there's only one door in the kingdom of heaven, as Jesus is Christ. Right. Or seek kingdom, right? And so, over these next days, tomorrow, um, Pastor Scott's going to be teaching in the morning. Um, Randy Hughes will be teaching in the afternoon. And what it is, is, is interaction. We want interaction. I and I um, honor the gift that God has upon your life. And I want to see that grow. And I think we all do. We want to see, we want to encourage and equip. That's the heart of, of the ministry and of the kingdom, right? Is to do not to do it at all. And what happened in the in the old testament, right? Where where there was this guy named David, right? He was the least, right? He wasn't even considered in the pit, right? Even Samuel, the prophet, right? Samuel, the prophet, he looks at him and he said, oh, that's, that's a nice looking boy. He's tall, he's, he's a little strong. He looks like the one, right? No, no, no. And God didn't tell him which one it was going to be, did he, till he got there? So he goes through and he, and he says, is there any others? He said, well, the run out of the one who's out doing his business, the one who's being faithful, right? The one who's working quietly in the field, the one who's being faithful because he knew his heart. God knows our hearts. And, and, and when David 
Bible says when when Samuel poured that oil upon David's head, he, be, he became anointed, right? The anointing. And also the call came, right? He was called. He was he was promised to be the king. And we didn't see David running around saying, I'm the king, I'm the king, I'm the king. We got an anointing. I can do, I can prophesy, I can do this. David was called a prophet. I, I'm all this, right? No, David was very humble. And even when it came time to hide in the cave with a mighty man, I know that those guys were a mess. Those guys were a complete mess, right? But they stood beside him. And those are the people that I want to have even in my walk. I don't want the, the one uppers or the, the, the people that, that have all this or are all that. I want the people that will stand beside me and hold them. Because we're in a spiritual battle. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. And I have a father of the faith that you know his name is Abraham. There's two parts even to that scripture. The first is first in the kingdom and his righteousness. So I said, Lord, what is righteousness, right? <sighs> Study it out. My father is Abraham. How did he achieve his righteousness? Not by doing everything right. right? He, and he had money. He had, he, had, he had money. He had everything. He had land. But he, he went into a land that he did not know. He went off and to do something that he did not know and he already had everything. He moved in faith, right? He's the father of faith. His faith was accounted as righteousness. And that's the same way with us. It's not about getting it right every time. Right? Our faith can move the mountain. And when we call unto the mountain to move, it shall be done. Right? As we as we move in a prayer of faith. Ask in the prayer of faith. Not by what we know, not by what we have seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things unseen. We are a people of faith. We are alien. We're a people. We're a peculiar group of people of faith that have the power to move mountains. We have a supernatural power that lives within us. For Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven does not come through observation, but yet it's within. Which means it's in him. He's in me, right? I am his vessel. And there's a couple of things that, that are really happening lately, and I keep asking the Lord, why how? You know, how what is the answer? You know, what, what is going on here in, in this prophetic thing? What is happening in, in 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 your government? What is happening in this world? What are you doing? Right? Because the Bible says. Jesus said, I will no longer call you the slave, but I will call you my friend. For the master does not tell the slave, but a friend tells the friend what he's doing. So I want to know. I want to be a friend of Jesus. How many want to be a friend of Jesus? Tell your neighbor, you're looking better already. You're looking better than when you came in. <laughs> but let's have some fun tonight. Pastor Reddy, he's a barrel of laughs. He loves to have fun. And He'll probably stay here till three in the morning, so make sure you sleep good tonight. <laughs> but he stays until everybody gets a prophetic word. And because he's learned to love the one in front of him. Yeah. And that's just the truth. <laughs> Me, I just want to have fun. <laughs> I do. I don't want to, I don't want to do it alone. I don't like, I'm a people person. So it's a, it's a double word, right? <laughs> Come on. He knows. 
But the thing is, we're made for each other. We're not made to do it. When you look at the Lord's Prayer, his disciples said, how shall we pray? That's ours. Right? Our Father, he's holy. He's in heaven, right? Our Father, let your kingdom come. Let it come through me. Let your and I'm telling you, this happened in the book of Luke, chapter 9, right? The disciples saw, they saw, this is hard. Because the church, I'm telling you, because it's like they drew blood first. I've heard a prophet say that, right? But what do we call it? We're called to be sent to the slaughter. We're called to be sent to the slaughter. Right? You go evil with evil. You overcome evil with good. We need to get that. We need to get clear. <laughs> That's the calling. That's the battle. The battle's in here. <laughs> and it's a tough one, right? Because everything about the flesh wants to win. I want to win. Everybody wants to be the winner. But guess what? We've already won. Right? We gotta we gotta stop looking to a place of victory, but start coming from a place of victory. Where the battle's already been won because we have what's called the spirit of peace, right? There's there's attributes of the Father, and one of them is he's called the spirit of peace, right? We have a peace that passes even our understanding. We have a, a spirit of love, right? Of power, a sound mind. We've already won. See, when we look at Peter, when he's when he said, Jesus, I'll go to death with you. It was a different Peter that died at the end, right? It was a completely different God, it seems. But something happened in his heart. There was a change in who he had become, in what he knew, right? He says, are you going to restore Israel? They thought they were going to battle. They were going to fight. They were going to fight to the end. And they were going to overtake. But Jesus had a different plan. That's his will. Even when, 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 when Jesus said to Peter, "Who do men say that I am?" Today, right? Some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, some say you're crazy. Whatever it is, people say weird stuff, right? He said, "Who do you say that I am?" He said, "For sure, you're the Christ." Ooh, for sure, no man told you that. You got that from the Father. This is where we start. These are the building blocks. This is the foundation of my life. Guess what else? Gates of hell are not going to come over. They cannot touch this. Right. Am I looking to a president? Am I looking to a prophet? Am I looking to a man or woman of God? Am I looking to a church or ministry? No. My father loves me. Amen. Is that what Jesus said? Amen. My father loves me. Yeah. What did the father say to him? He said, this is my son. I'm well pleased. What did, you, what did he say to the people? Listen to him. Hear him. He lives in me. I am the vessel of the living Christ. <laughs> How good is that? What else do I need? What else do I need? He's inside of me. Those that are joined with the Lord are what? One spirit for God is one. I hope somebody's catching this. Because this will change your ministry. This will change your life. This will change the way that you see things. See, the biggest thing about Peter was he had to change the way that he saw things. Jesus said in a few more verses, he said, 
know what I mean? We go from we go from here to here, all in, all in a couple of verses, right? He's, now he's calling me Satan. In, in the book of in the book of Luke, chapter nine, they're ready to call down fire. These are the disciples of Jesus Christ. These are the all, the ones that we love and we idolize in the Bible. These are the ones that are ready to call down fire upon any opposition. We need to know what's coming out of my flesh and what the Spirit of God is saying. Listen to me, says the Lord. How do we how do we build a relationship with him? we spend time? We spend time. There's there's times that I hear the Lord so clearly there's no doubt in my, my mind that it, that it was the Lord. Very clear. I keep no mind. And then there's times that it was it could have been the Lord. That might have been the Lord. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with it because everybody else is saying it. I could be wrong. I could be moving in my flesh. I could be moving in another spirit, right? We're all vessels, right? But Jesus was a hundred percent obedient to his father. Right? The devil tempted Jesus Christ. He said that Jesus was tempted eh, as, as man are tempted. He, he was he was flesh, right? He was God in, in the flesh. He was tempted. It's Psalms 91. You're hungry. You know, make make some bread for yourself. Right? How many take that? How many take that offer? Let's be make some bread for myself, right? I can, let's use the anointing. Let's use the anointing. Let's use my platform. Let's use this. I'm going to make a little bread for myself. Yeah. Wow. And I'm sorry. It's just true. Wow. I'm not condemning. I'm just saying how many took the deal. Yeah. Because the, the devil promised this, and he wasn't lying. He said, you see all the kingdoms of the world? They belong to me, bud. They're mine. You can have them. Jesus said, man shall not live in front of but every word. We got to catch this. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. My word, my manna from yesterday is no good. Right? Look at the Old Testament. What happened when they began to try to save it? This is how we get so many denominations. This is how we have so many ministries that are out there. I think there, I saw some study that there was like 60 some thousand. God's never said it still. He's always moving. He's always doing something, right? But what happened when 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 Jesus Moses showed up? What's the first thing man wanted to do? Okay? Let's build ponds this year. Is to the disciples when he said, Is anybody tracking with me tonight? When Jesus said this to It's bigger than gold. It's bigger than any. We have to learn to stop looking this way. Start working out of here. Because that's where the kingdom is within you. When you walk into the room, you'll shut down this thing. And when you walk into the leopards, when you, when you walk near the sick, they become healed. And they walked around the demon and they began to manifest. 
Di Barisina. Yep. He's been driving in the car and seeing the demons manifest. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not telling you you're number one. But these kind of things, they happen. You are the light to be set up by the hell for people to see. But see, good overcomes evil. Evil can never overcome evil. That's why Jesus, when they, they accuse Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, of casting out demons by the spirit of Beelzebub. He said the same thing, right? Who judges you? Your sons will judge you, right? But if, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, you will know the kingdom of heaven is among that is evidence. <clears throat> I've given you power and authority over every unclean spirit in all sickness and disease. You know, if I fall in to start making excuses, then I'm not in faith. The problem isn't them, it's me. Right? I'm working here. I'm working from here. I'm looking to you. <laughs> Isn't that why our scripture says, look within yourself to see if you're in faith? Right? Because even the mustard seed of faith can move a mountain, can change the atmosphere. Not by what I've seen yesterday or by what I know, but what I hope for. She spent time, money, everything she had. She spent 12 years, right? The Bible says she spent 12 years. She went to the doctor. She spent her money, but she couldn't stop the blood issue. She broke the law. Was she supposed to be out in public? She's she could have been stoned at them because she was supposed to shout under the law, I'm unclean. Right? But she thought within her mind, if I could just touch the hem of this garment, then I Do you know how much that says? If I could just touch the hem of this garment, then I could be clean. I need a savior. I can't save myself. I can't heal myself. I can't deliver myself. I need a savior. I needed a savior yesterday. I need a savior today, and I'm going to need one tomorrow. We get into this pattern, and we hear it in circles. Oh, I've been saved, and I'm, I'm just waiting, brother, to go on to my glory. I'm going to live a comfortable life, and I'm just going to do what I want. There's no advance for that. How are we going to grow with, with that mindset or that paradigm that, that I've arrived somewhere? Because Peter, he was already there when he said to Jesus, I'll go with him, bro. In, in his mind, in his heart, he was set that we're going to go together. We're growing until it came time, until the test came. Then he saw something come out of him that he didn't even know was there. That's what happens to us. When we get put in situations, when we get shaken out of our comfort zones, things come out of us that we don't even know is there. I've seen some sweet little lady that nobody would ever speak bad of. She's always calm and whatever, but something happened to her. She snapped and everything comes out at once. You know anybody like that? It happens. We don't realize what's in us until we go through some tests, until we're trying, until we're put in places that we have to overcome. The same thing happened with David. He was anointed as king. He, Saul killed his thousands and David killed his ten thousand. He was a man of war. He was a man of, of, of um, integrity. He was all these things. Even though he's been his best friend to death and saw his life, right? That's you. That's me. 
But the Bible says, how can you understand this? The Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. God uses broken vessels for his glory. If I've got it all together and I've got everything figured out, I certainly don't need to say But what did Jesus say? Those that will be great in my kingdom. My kingdom, he said, shall be the humble ones. They shall be the servants, even unto all. Right? You see, the disciples kind of got that some later, right? As they grew in the spirit, they grew in the Lord. They became stronger. They, they acquired more authority. They acquired more, right? The Bible says in the book of Acts that, that Peter walked out of the synagogue and there was a line people sitting there waiting. And he didn't pray for that. The shadow killed him. How many want to be there at that point? How many want more? <laughs> I want more. I'm not satisfied with yesterday's bread. But he walked out of the synagogue and then and demons began to man. He would pray for things like prayer thoughts. They would use them to actually get things happen are real and they happen today. In 2014, I was a mess. That's all I wanted. I didn't care where I found it. There was something in me that wanted the truth. Now I didn't care where I found it. I started going to church. I was I was I was struggling with with alcohol my whole life, with drugs or whatever. And I was going to AA and I was just praying, I was seeking the truth. I didn't know, I wanted to go to church. I didn't know if I was Catholic or Baptist or Christian. I didn't know what any of that was. I just knew they were all hypocrites. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, or I knew from my experience on TV that if I sent in a thousand dollars and I'd be all right. <laughs> And all this stuff, and everything's going to be great. <laughs> if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves, change their wicked ways, repent. I will be in heaven. I will be in heaven. Come on. That's what I have to say about that. Come on. Come on. The calling's still there. Yeah. But guess what? They're in wicked ways. Yeah. Because they're not a servant to the people. I mean, new plane, I mean, new house, brother. God wants me to have faith for this. I'll leave that there. But anyways, so I'm, I'm going to church and I'm going to these meetings. And I'm all kinds of confused, but there's something happening in my life. Something that was changing me from the inside out. I started having these homes. And I ended up at a, a great big park meeting. In, in, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I, I remember reading the book of Matthew, which talks about the table was prepared and they were busy doing their, their farming, they were busy doing their businesses and stuff. And this scripture is speaking to me. And I go to the meeting, I didn't know who Randy Park was or anybody around this. I, I heard of, you know, Bill Johnson. And I'm hungry and I'm seeking. And I hear about, you know, healing and deliverance and this kind of stuff. I had seen a deliverance. And something happened to me. Changed. Like, this is real. You see it. If you ever see it, a deliverance, and I, I know probably just about everybody here probably has, and you understand that it's not it's not just pretend. Yeah. That something serious is happening there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it awakes you to something, right? Yeah. That's what happens. I'm like, wow. It's real when you know those people falling down on the TV, they weren't just being over emotional. Yeah. Something's happening here. I was in the atmosphere. I felt it. And something came over me. I started talking around so fast and I'm like, I don't know who I am right now. I don't know what I'm saying. It's just coming out of me, right? Something was bubbling out of me. And, and I began to prophesy and then and then uh, uh Pastor Pam says, You sound like Todd White. You know, you know who he is? And I said, I don't know who he is. Anyways, I up going. And, and I get right out there, get healed by back in supernatural healed. I end up in a Randy Park meeting in, in 
and he's speaking. I don't know who he is, but when he starts to talk, my hands begin to burn. I never had been slain in the spirit. I never fell under. I never felt like any like overcoming of God or falling on the ground or any of that stuff. I've seen. I had seen people do it, but I never experienced that. But I'm sitting there in the chair, and something real is happening. My hands begin to burn, and he said, "God, God, God is is wanting to." To touch a few people tonight, he starts talking about his testimony and how how um whoo, people were touched and, and the anointing came up on that and changed their lives. to the ground. And I was stuck. I was just stuck. I couldn't move. But my mind was there. And then I hear he prayed for another group of people and I start hearing screaming. Loud screaming. Ooh. You know what I was reminded of? The scripture says there's many rooms in heaven by the Father's house. I was glad I was in the one I was. <laughs> I was like, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Leave them people over there. Take me to my room, please. Because I was under the presence and power of God. Yeah. And I didn't even know what was happening. I, mean, I just knew that something was happening. And I was on fire. And there was like there was like this 220 volts going through my chest, and I was curling a ball, but I was in my happy place. And I was thinking. The Lord, that there's many rooms in my father's house. Because the people that I were hearing around me were in support. And I have a heart for those people. Because I want to see those people. <coughs> I've been I've been through it. I've been through it. And there's nothing like being in it, not like having any way out of it. It becomes a circle. It becomes a vicious circle. You know, where it's good for a little bit and it comes back around. And it's okay. And it gets real bad and it comes back around. So it becomes a circle, right? The circle of life. I'm helping, right? The circle of life, right? But something changed. Something changed in it. From that day forward, when I began to pray for people, they would fall down. I was talking to a young kid. He got you. It's like hanging out, talking to him about feelings. See, God was moving in my life. He's going to move in your life. Yeah. He's going to change your life. Come on. God is raising an army. He's raising an army. And you know what he says? Look to me. Right? I will never leave the person. I hear some people say prophetic circles. You know, if, if you know, so and so doesn't get elected, this happens. Never. Guess what? My God can save a nation in a day. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Jesus. sorry. Come My on. God is that big. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. And and I I had a dream that Biden won the election on November second, and I'm like, get off me, devil! I didn't tell Chris. I my son was there the next day. I didn't tell him to the following day. I'm trying to process it. What does this mean, Lord? Just me and you. Just me and you. What does it mean? I saw some things in the dream. I saw that I was, was going to be elected president. And I saw that there was media manipulation and subliminal messaging. And just me and my Lord. I didn't get on my Facebook. And I didn't. It's it scared me, and it's like I didn't understand it because I voted for Mr. Trump. Mm. But what is God saying? And I'm not saying anything other than I still believe that there's going to be a great shaking on the earth. I'm telling you that there's so much corruption on, on this earth that if you can't see it, you're blind. But I'm telling you that I am the light. 
I am the chain. I don't depend just on a, a President Trump or any other thing. We have to approach it as if it depends on me. Yeah. You know, um, good. Lonnie Frisbee got a word in California. He got a prophetic word. And Lonnie Frisbee was a hippie, a nobody. As he said, they, they love the goodies that I have, but they don't like the person. I, they love the goodies. They love the prophetic voice. They love the anointing, but they don't really care for the person. He was a broken person. But he loved the Lord. He was faithful. He messed up, but he was faithful. That's really what God's looking for. Yeah. Come on. You know, if I fall down, I get back up and I go to the Lord. Repentance is the first order of business in the kingdom. Is that what Jesus said? Repent for the kingdom's hand, right? Repent because I'm going to show you some things. Change the way you think. Change the way we do business because I have some great things to show you. The kingdom of heaven is here. It's been here since Jesus went to the cross. Don't miss it. Don't think it's in the sweet by and by. When I, oh brother, when I go on the globe. Jesus said, as I've been sent, so I sent the God. There's a great commission. But Jesus doesn't send you into something he doesn't go with you. Right? For I will never leave or forsake you. If it's big enough for you to handle, you know it's not that. There was there's something very interesting that happened at Chris and I this year. We go to Africa and different nations and we can say I love love healing. Ever since I got touched by God, I've had this crazy healing gift on my life. See everything from cancer, the bones people that have together, created miracles for people throwing up tumors and falling off of people that all kinds of stuff. It's amazing. I love it. I can't explain to you how it happens. I just know it does. I believe it's going to happen tonight. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There it is. And, you know, the thing is, Jesus, or Paul said this. He said, the king, for the kingdom of heaven does not come in great speed, but in power. Right? Yeah. So if we're not a people of power, then what are we? If we're not a people of resurrection power, then what are we? Let's study psychology. Right? Let's study Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> Let's study something that we can understand and control. Because that's really what it's about. But you know what? Our mind is a great slave but a terrible master. Good. And that's what happens. We fall into traps. We fall into cycles. We fall into traditions. And we get distracted from what he's saying. I remember Randy Clark's testimony the night that he went to Toronto. He had a prophet that wouldn't speak to him, right? Randy Clark. I don't know how many people are familiar with what happened in Toronto that went on before, right? And, and the night before Randy went there, the prophet calls him up. Now, Randy, God's going to use you. Don't get nervous. Because when you get nervous, you don't hear God. Goodbye. <laughs> Sometimes that's all we have to say to people. Yeah. We don't have to start making things up. That God did what He said. He got to say what He said, because then He's going to do it. Remember Samuel. God said to Samuel, "Go, you're going to anoint the king." But he didn't tell him who. So He calls up Randy and He says, "Don't get nervous. For when you get nervous, you miss it." And then we all know what happened after Randy went there. The anointing came and. You know, all hell broke loose, so to speak, right? Something changed. But we still have that today. It didn't go away. We still have it. You know, the great Finney revival 
Anybody know about the Great Finney Revival? The Great Finney Revival was a revival of repentance. There was no meaning. The whole city of Rochester was saved, right? Almost 100,000 people. Pretty much the whole city came under the conviction. But there was no meaning. Right? So who wants to go backwards? Nope. Not me. No. I don't. Because my kingdom is unshaken. The your kingdom is mine, right? And I have a king. It's it's the king's domain, it's his, but I work with him and for him. We are one. Right? That's you, that's me. We are one. We become one with each other. Isn't that the prayer that Jesus prayed to the Father? Father, it's not my prayer that you take them from the world, that you keep them from the evil, that they should become one as you and I are. So God wants us to be one with each other. The book of Psalm 6 we should go to the end. How they move and do everything together, but there's no leader. I'm telling you, this is scripture. And that's where we're headed. Because the kingdom of heaven is unshakable, but forever expanding. Which means we're not going backwards. It hasn't gone to pop. You know, with my parents used to say, hey, you know, the whole world's gone to pop. You know, did anybody else hear that? They used to say, oh, the world's going to pop, right? Well, oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because my kingdom. My God's kingdom is unshakable and forever is and he's a He's a God of law and order, right? It's not just law. There's an order that takes place. In the same way that we see even the natural government, now we have to have order, right? Yeah. Because otherwise the whole system is broke. It's about a social system. And guess what? The kingdom is the same way. So we have, a lot of times we have to to throw out, we think we know a lot of stuff that we've been taught. You know, when I was growing up, and I was taught that you know God was only in church. You go there on Sunday, you can't swear. You got to be on your best behavior. You have to wear nice clothes. That's what I knew. I didn't go to church, but I knew it, right? Because God was there. So he did you. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> but it doesn't look anything like what I was told, or what the perception was, or what people thought, or what people thought, or what the dreams. And guess what? We need to come to the humility to say that God, maybe it wasn't the way I thought. Now, let's do it your way. Now, because he has a plan. He has a plan for a kingdom and he has a plan for your life. Because what happens when we're walking his plan, even though we think we're going the right way? You know, do you ever know anybody who's been married for a long time and they fight and they fight and they fight and they fight? Sooner or later, they forgot what they were fighting about. But they got so used to fighting that they missed it. Oh, she used to say, I'm going in the I've been walking. Because I'm I will build my church on this rock, and it cannot be shaken. We need to refocus. We need to relearn what we've been taught. We need to regather. You know, there's a. How many know about hunting dogs? Anybody know about hunting dogs? You know, hunting dogs are good. They do their job very well, and they can tree a cool and they can do whatever they want, right? But what happens when you put them together in a kennel? Do they attack each other? They do, don't they? They'll tear each other up. Why? Because they're not doing what they were intended to do, what they were trained to do. So they become idle. 
and they began to attack each other. How many have had sheep bite? How many know what sheep bite is? When when I got touched by God, I was living with a girl. She was my girlfriend at the time. We were living in sin. But God touched me, right? How could that happen, Bobby? How could God touch me and use me when he's not using me? this person, for instance, who's been in the church for 20 years? Come on. You realize what happened to me? You realize how the looks that I got when I went into the church? I was I had Randy on the phone a lot, didn't I? Yeah. I was like, man, I don't you know, I had more love in the bar. You know, at least I knew where they were coming from. I had it. I mean, I had it. I was I did my first trip to Africa. I saw healings, you know, I saw God moving there. I come back and I'm like, yeah, you know, I saw this happen and, and this woman I saw a miracle. And you know what you know what the the elder said to me, he says, You're gonna monkeys in heal in Africa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> did, did I tell you that? It happened to me. And I tell you, I was scared to death when I went to Africa. I was in the pastor. I had a prophetic word from the Lord from a woman in Jamestown, Jackie Myers. She said, I see you fly in Africa. You're going to go on a mission. You're going to see the sick people and see this and that. And I had an invite online. Imagine that, Ronald. Okay. Guy from Africa solicited me to come to Africa to do who's sick. And I said, Pastor, pray for me. Should I go? Immediately he said, No, I wouldn't go. He just take advantage of it. So here I am with the word of the Lord, function in my spirit. It's scared to death because I'm not a pastor. I, I had never preached the sermon. I heard it. I heard a few nice ones. I, I like like nicely placed sermons that come out. And even I saw a guy move right into a song at the end, and I'm like, I want to be like that. <laughs> I'm like, I want to be like that guy. I want to give a, a nice sermon when it all comes to the end. I want to go to the piano and I want to play a nice song, and we're going to have a happy ending. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I loved it, but you know what? I couldn't do anything with that. I couldn't do. I couldn't take that to Africa. Come on. Yep. All I could do when I got there was give the lady my last 20 bucks. But she was starving and she looked like a twig. And she had children there. Come on. Come on. Wow. <clears throat> what I thought I needed was completely different from what God wanted. And when I started to look at other people, I began to get all different kinds of answers. All kinds of opinions, you know? When I was growing up, my dad used to say opinions are like, yeah, so everybody's got, right? Has anybody heard that? Yeah. And it's true. It's sure. true. It, it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Randy said, "Not in church." <laughs> uh -oh. I think that's in the scripture. <laughs> but see, according to religion, I was living in sin, mm -hmm. but God touched me at the same time. According to man. I didn't know what I was doing. And according to man, I was unqualified. I wasn't worthy. And I got that Everybody is here. It's all. 
And I'm like, I'm, I don't have a script. I don't know. I don't know. You're preaching tonight. I said less than hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get in the bed. And then here, I, I know I think it might have been my last year. Somebody said to me, You're going to get scared. Some kind of cheesy, like you know, <laughs> Polka Nose thing. Anybody been to the Polka It's pretty cheesy. Like that. It's like, you know, yeah, that was cool maybe back in the 60s and 70s, but uh, not, no. It's like, yeah, it's real cheesy. <laughs> sees but it's never full isn't that what the bible says that's that's great right i can you know for people i've got more money than my friends right that's good spent yeah but did you give up what 
The anointing is here in this place. There's there's many anointed people in ministries that are going to minister throughout this weekend. But we want you to be part of all of it. And where there's healing, we want to see healing. Where there's where there's deliverance, we want to see deliverance. Why? Because I couldn't say myself. And you can't eat. That's what we call on the table for. Right? Great person. These days. And it endures forever. And God has done some amazing things with, with my wife, Christiana, and I this year, where we were so into crusades and healing that that's all we thought we knew how to do. Yeah. And we get there, and all of a sudden, from a healing crusade, it turns out we got to feed these orphans because they just lost their baby sponsor. And they're going to close down the kitchen, and these kids had nowhere to go because the county, or not the county, but the, the help is going to shut them down because they don't have a proper kitchen. And, and Chris and I start crying, God help us. Let us be in the hands. We don't know how to do this. We don't know how to do it. We had no like training. We didn't go to, to Randy Hughes Supernatural School of Missions, how to set up missions in, in, in orphanages and all this stuff. We didn't go to that school and learn how to do that stuff. <laughs> and pay the $8.95 so I could go home and watch TV. I'm telling you, you got to do something with what the Lord's doing here this weekend. And, and so we start calling out, and then a couple ministries that they start saying, "Hey, we want to, we want to help you with that kitchen. What can we do?" And they start sending money. We said, "Well, these kids haven't eaten. They've been down to one meal a day, and but there was a lot of them. It wasn't just like it wasn't like, oh, there's three orphans here. We need to. There's there was three hundred. And then the outskirt ones, it ended up to like a thousand local children that, that were dependent on it. And it all just went off the door. And we're right in the middle of it now. We have to do something. So we start calling upon our friend, our partner, say, hey, you know, we need, to, we need to come here. We need to stand up. If, if somebody could just say, hey, you know what? I'll take care of one of them. I can't take care of ten. I can commit to one. You know, this kind of thing. And all of a sudden, five grand came in to build the kitchen. And all of a sudden, two thousand came in to defeat the kids, and, and, the, and the money starts coming in. Not because of who we were, but because, of who we were. Yeah, because we stood out in faith. Not because we knew or we had been trained, but because I said, "Here I am." Chris said, "Here I am, Lord. Use me." Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed them all. And tonight, I pray that there's a shift in your life, that there's a refire, that, that God brings you and opens your eyes to see what is available for you. That, you know, the Bible says, it's just, and there's a song that says, Open the eyes of my heart. Yeah. 
want to see. Right? See, we don't, we, we always tend to look through our natural eyes, but God wants us to see through our heart, right? Remember when, when, when Jesus was resurrected, he walked out, I think it's Luke 24. He was walking with the dudes, right? And they, they said, he said, what's up, guys? Right? This is Jesus resurrected talking to him. And they, and they said, haven't you heard? Are you the only one? I mean, haven't you heard, you know, Donald Trump, whatever? Haven't you heard? And Jesus to stand beside him. What's going on, guys? Haven't you heard the great prophet? The great prophet is standing right beside them. And Jesus opened their mouth so that they could see. Only Christ. Christ can open the eyes. He's built an army. Saying there's a non, there's an invitation. He is insane. Well, you know, Ronald, you got an A plus on the test today. You got an A plus at home. No, I this guy does not see his mask uh, or say, is that the one that's going to go to battle? Is, 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 is Ren going to be the one that goes to battle with me? Is, is Randy going to be the one? Is, is Scott going to be the one that goes to battle with me? When times, see, we don't want the ones that, that are there when everything's going great. We want the ones that are there beside us when times get hard. Yeah, come on. Look at this world today. When every time that my wife doesn't cook right for me, I'm going to go get a new one. Or, or this happens, you know, hey, Ron, you just offended me, so, you know, I'm going to go get a new friend. I want the ones beside me that are going to stand with me and for me. And that's what we need in the kingdom. That's what happened with David's mighty men. The world didn't see them that way. But they were faithful. We're a people of faith. We're a people of the supernatural. You know, even over this week, that we're going to learn about the supernatural. That hope it kills you. Because it killed me. Come on. It killed, it killed everything I thought I ever knew to the point where I was saying, God, where have you been in whole life? Come on. You ever hear anybody say that? Where have you been my whole life? This is so good. Where has it been? How could I have missed it? It's been sitting in front of me all this time, and I completely missed it. Anybody know anybody like that? Where's those things? It's all right here. And I think where you put them, right? Right. Right. So open eyes. God, pray. Your destiny, your call. Over this year, I just got in the morning. Oh, it's going to be a tough point to me. If you haven't heard the voice of God or, or learned to serve, He's going to take a voice. Now, He guarantees that you won't be here for your friends. That you won't be here without hearing the voice of God, or you're going to get your money back. <laughs> he said he's even tomorrow night special, he's going to double it. You're going to get double your money back. <laughs> We're serious. We're serious. There are certain countries that we go to that people are serious. Even to be a Christian, we have to be Yeah, come on. We have to take this thing seriously because it's a, it's a, it's a laying down. It's a life call. It's a lifestyle. It's an adventure. It's fun. It's fun. We have to, we have to be a people that are holy, not without just the, the name. Oh, they're extreme or they're this or that. But I love Jesus. I love. Him. Like, like Peter said, I love you, Lord. 
And he got angry. He could see Peter get right in his face. Jesus, I love you. So, I want to pray tonight. First of all, if, if you've been distracted, if you've been caught up, if you've been if you've been caught in some type of addiction or some kind of I talked about earlier this mission that's not we want to break it down. If there was a time I needed that only he can set me free, right? Those who the sun sets free free indeed. So if that's you tonight, for the main two prayers. One is to do the breaking, and the other is to do the spill. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, be not drunk on the wine, but be filled. Yes. And tonight, you're going to be filled, and then guess what? And then tomorrow, you're going to be filled. Tomorrow, you're going to be filled. Come on. <laughs> and then Sunday, we're going to be filled. <laughs> we're not going to forsake fellowship. We're coming together of the brother. It's, there's going to be a fresh oil and mantles and a fresh fire that's going to be poured out. And I pray that you don't just keep it. I pray that you would give it away. I pray that you would prophesy. I pray that you would do something with it. I pray that God would wreck you the way that he wrecked me. And so, if you're Backslid. If you're struggling with an addiction, if any of the things that I talked about that are that are holding you, whatever it is that's holding you, if you say, I, I feel, I just feel like I'm blind, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. You know, I, I haven't moved forward, I haven't, you know, I've been this and that. I want you to come forward. I want you to stand there. We're going to pray for you, Lord Jesus. If, 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 you know, if, if you're struggling with any addictions or anything like that, we just want to be. There was a time that I was so caught up in addiction, that's all I ever knew. I, I went, at an early age, I went to a place called Changing Seasons and was a drug and alcohol. And I said, with my life, I said, how what am I going to do? Because that was all that I ever knew at a very young age. I didn't know how to live life outside of that. I think we all get there. That we don't know how to live life outside of what we know. And so, if any of these things are resounding, anything I've said, I want you to come and stand. And, and, and we're going to pray for you tonight. And then, in the second prayer, we're going to pray for everybody for the fresh and filling of the Spirit. Yes, but I want to pray specifically for anybody that is caught by the stuff. Are these kind of things that we're not talking about? If it's burning in your heart, if there's something burning in you right now, I want you to come forward. Because I believe the Spirit of the Lord is trying to break that from your life. And only God can set us free. Only God can change these things within us. And only God can unlock our hearts. And I'm telling you, there's more power in that than you can ever know. When Jesus walked out of the desert, he walked out with power in the 
And if that doesn't scare you, that that power unlimited is available for you, then there's something wrong. Because what would we do with unlimited power? That scares me. Father, we just thank you. That you are breaking off any lukewarmness in this place. Thank you, Lord, that you are breaking off any deception in this place tonight. And through the power of your Holy Spirit, Father, I thank you, Lord, to break off any addictions of, of drugs, of alcohol, of pornography, of, of anything, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, even uh, gossip in the church, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are striking that down. And I thank you, Lord, that, that we are people of faith and we are people that are edifying, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, that you are breaking every chain through the blood of Jesus Christ. I come across I come against every demonic attack. And I thank you, Lord, for the blood over each life within the sound of this tonight. That you are breaking addictions, that you are breaking every chain, Lord. And every generational curse be broken from this day forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, come, come in power, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, to deliver them tonight. From every every backsliding and every lie, every lie that exalts itself about the spirit of truth, be broken now in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, come in power.
Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your kingdom. We thank you for your glory tonight. And many, I believe that, that you're going to even see a manifestation of gold. Physical manifestations upon your presence, uh, upon your person. Father, we thank you for the gold, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for the great grace for Holy Spirit come upon us tonight, Lord. May there be a fresh baptism, an infilling of the Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you, Lord. Let your fire fall upon them tonight. Fire of God come upon them, Lord. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let them burn. This your game on. This your game on, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing, Lord. Let it be loosed in this place tonight, Lord. Let it be loosed tonight, Lord. Fire of God come upon you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This came on means let it burn. This came on.
blessing for your life. And you living water is going to begin to run into your life. Because you know what happens to water that sticks, right? It stagnates and it gets rotten. And the word says that I'm going to reduce some things. I hear you all just say right now, I see a spirit of revival fire bursting forth from this place right here. I don't know anything about that, but I feel like there's, I, I, see, I see men in old clothing that were worshiping God. And so I feel like that's represented that there, there used to be revival fire. There's a history of revival fire in this region, this small region right here. I don't know anything about it. You guys that are here know more than I do. I see men in like old clothing, right? Like Civil War 1800s. You know, I can't I can't tell that uh, I'm not a historian, okay? But uh, there was revival that was here. There was revival right here at that, right here at, at how do you say this one? I, I, I keep Kenona. saying it wrong. Kenona. I keep saying it wrong. Um, people want to say quinoa. <laughs> it's just stuck. It got stuck. I can't get it out. But I see revival fire that wants to break forth, and I see uh, a generation before that was praying and seeing in revival fire, and I see it stirred up in the soil here. And I see it stirred up in the soil. And as the dams break forth, and let me be clear, it's not a city dam, it's your dam. Okay, your dam, it's each you. And I see the spring of water come out and water the ground that others have planted. And so as you couple that with the revival that's coming out of you, it's going to burst forth what has been planted in the ground long, long ago. Ooh. So I want you to understand that Jesus changed the world with 12 men. I'm looking around, there's more than 12. <laughs> so if Jesus can change the whole world with 12 men, then I think we can change this region with the ones that are here tonight. And whoever shows up tomorrow. Whoa, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I feel like there's some cracks in your armor tonight. I feel... I, I, I don't know what this region has been under, but I just I feel like this weighty heaviness in this region. Weighty heaviness in this region. And it's like it's pressing down. And I hear the saints say, we're about to explode now. So there's been a pressing down, an oppressive spirit here. Even though I feel like the people here have a... I, I don't know much about the region. I, I promise I don't. Uh, but I feel like... That you guys are different than New York, than New York, right? Than what the nation thinks of New York. And so I see like this spirit of freedom here, but I see this oppressive spirit pressing down. And I see that as you guys are rising up, that, that spirit will no longer be able to press you. And even in the season of pressing trial, tribulation, where the enemy is beginning to roar. Like a roaring lion. I want you to remember something. The word of God says the enemy comes like a roaring lion. The key word there is like a roaring lion. He is not the lion. He is an imposter. And he has the power. And his roar is empty. Because the lion of Judah roars for us. We're going to press into his presence. We're going to get something this weekend. We're going to see the power of God do. We're going to see God change lives. You're going to get healing. You're going to get victory. You're going to get deliverance. You're going to move to another level of God. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to teach you tomorrow night how to hear the voice of God. And hopefully we'll get some deeper things. I know Thomas made a joke that you get your money back. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the truth. And every time I've taught people how to hear God's voice, 99% of everyone in the room has heard his voice. And I only say 99% just to be on the side of the air. You will hear his voice. How many of you guys in here can concretely say that you hear God's voice when you, when you listen every time? Thank you, you, you hear it. But what if I ask you how old I am? What the name of my children are? Do you hear God's voice like that? So you can grow. So you can get deeper. Okay? How many of you guys have heard God's voice of age? How many of you guys would feel like I can't be certain I've never heard God's voice before? Definitive. 
Raise your hand. Fuck. You quit to praise me. Quit to raise. Amen. So tomorrow I'm going to teach you how to walk through that to hear his voice. It turns out God's always speaking, it's just we're rarely listening. So I'm going to teach you how to listen to God's voice. We're going to press into what the season is. Because I believe that the season that we're walking into, the saints need to be equipped. If you are not equipped, then this season can crush you. But those that are equipped will walk in victory. It is a Goliath season. Understand what we are in. We're in a Goliath season. Either you will shake or you will take the head off the giant. That's the season you're in. Either you will tremble in fear of the giant or you will take the head off the giant. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So, watch you be prepared for the bar. I'm going to close it out. I'm going to take an offering. Well, I would say that you've been enriched. Been added to. Amen. Thomas is asking to see. Just to be it's just simple. The Lord freely gives, so do we. If you can pay request on that. So as the basket comes, just like the Lord's engine. You don't normally come to something like this and think you come to a you. You know, normally, I mean, these days it's getting you about to break the bank to go to a, to a two or three day conference. Especially when you get somebody like me. You get ahead of but normally it's going to be a time. Not that the glory is any different, but you know what I mean. Anticipation matters. That's right. Expectancy it matters. Does. Absolutely. It's not the name, it's the expectancy. That's exactly right. It's expectancy. So so into your expectation. Come on. How's that? Come on. So into your expectation. I didn't tell you I have been here. My belly's just you know out of your belly. You'll, you'll, if you learn something more this week, you realize there's a lot of things from here. Come on. Yeah. Out of your belly. So, Father, I just thank you. She got up with so much. For what you've started. Lord, that you will bring to completion what you've started. And as the meetings move onward over the weekend, Lord God, I just sense an, an increase and an increase and an increase and an increase. And when we go home, we're going to go home fat full, overflowing. The vat will be so filled that it'll be overflowing that you'll have to give to those that don't have. Amen? He was right. We, we've been in a dry season. We know the region. We lived here long. I've been here 10 years now almost. And when I came up here from Florida, I thought, oh my God, I've died with the health. God sent me back to Africa. The two years I spent in China were great. You know, upstate New York, forget it. Let me go somewhere else. Amen. But we've been diligent to press and press and press and press. And we watch freedom come to the region little by little by little bit. There's an, I, I tell you what I just heard. There's explosive growth coming. That's right. Explosive growth. Amen. It was this way, and then it's that way. And it'll be that way so far and so fast that you forget that it was ever this way. Amen. I'm telling you, the glory of the Lord is arising upon those that are truly His. Amen. We're King's kids. Amen. So, man, if I, I, I'm just I'm about to get cranked up now. The fire is on. She's beginning to move in the room. She got up and I'm kind of closed and I've been shooting out the smoke of my face. Disturbed it up. Buried it up. 
I'm telling you that the glory and glory is for you. It's on the list. Hey, 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 I said, add it to each other. Just wait and just release what you want. Just release what you want. Release your portion. Your own portion. That's all. I'm not going to stop this. I'm not going to give you that offer. I'm not going to give you that offer. I'm not going to give you that offer. I'm telling you. You got a minute, you got a minute, you got a minute. Hey, I got 10 minutes here. <laughs> Shout out to most of us. Come on. Feel it? Come on. Come on, D. Come on. Share the drums. Come on. Come on. Scott said he was an old rocker. That's Rocky. Just for a minute before we go. Come on. Come on. That's right. Fair enough. Come on. Build momentum. What's your name? Kim, yeah. come up here. I just want you to release what you carried in. It's not a thought process. Just, just put your hands out. Put your hands out. Just think in your heart. Just say, I release the gift of God to be placed in me. For these people, I release. I just received. I'm telling you, she's releasing something. Receive it. Receive it. There it is. Wow. Come on. We change our items to new We release our items. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Hey. 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 Time. 
It's time. Lord, bless everyone as they go, Lord God. Keep them in their way, Lord God. But Father, I pray that you captivate them tonight while they sleep, that you whisper kindness to them, that you love upon them, Lord. If they sleep well in their motel rooms or in their homes, Lord God, they come back refreshed in the morning. Amen? Amen. Everybody be blessed. We'll see you all at 10 o'clock in the morning. Thank you.